a passage, put this into six. If all angles in the triangle... In May 2007, we filmed the lives of four Year 8 pupils at Hove Park Secondary School near Brighton. Robert, Louise, Bradley and Jack. The four documentaries can be seen on the Teachers TV website. We asked a number of leading practitioners to watch the films and give us their frank opinions about the issues raised by this unique insight into the learning experience. This programme focuses on shaping teaching to suit the needs of students. Louise was seen growing increasingly frustrated in Spanish. But it's just with stuff that I don't really understand. Silencio, silencio. I'm going to repeat it, that was, okay? that was number three. Number three. What number was that? We were on 2B, but that um, the tape said it was on number three. The second one. There are two questions. She was getting really confused as which question they were on. She wanted to get it right, she wanted to do it properly. Sábado por la noche, and then there are two parts. She was more than frustrated with that lesson. I think she was actually in pain. You're not sure on the question and you're not sure about your answer and and so you just feel a bit stupid in case because you get it wrong. Today we're going to do a storyboard. But French was much better. Okay, so it's two objectives. Some of you will only achieve the first one, some of you will achieve both. Okay. Bon, on va commencer. Right, vocabulary. City comment. What was it like as a question? Okay, city comment. These are when you put opinions in. Opinions are very, very important. She had a really pacey, well thought out uh, lesson where everything was working and the children were engaged. In prior planning and preparation prevents a poor performance, and that works every time in teaching. Génial! Does génial mean boring? No, or oui? How do you think that génial means boring? Okay, so what does génial mean? It's quite fun because she makes French into games, and so you just put your hand up and you don't really feel silly at all. The eye contact was there, they were all sitting up straight, they were engaged, they, they, they were nodding, their body language was very positive. So for, for Louise, that was a really, really good session. The Spanish lesson was slower, was more pedestrian. The body language amongst the students was slouched and low, it wasn't engaged. The teacher is there to drive the learning, to inspire, to make sure that kids, when they're entering the class, are excited by the prospect of learning, to transmit knowledge. It's a multifaceted role. And you could see that with, with that brilliant female French teacher. How do you say Wow, look at yours! Which is that? No, it's not. Yes, it is, look. But Jack's frustration came out in his French lesson. Yes, go on. Yes, go on, hangman. Oh. He completed the worksheet in about five minutes. The reward, it was a reward rather than a differentiation or an extension task, was to, to be able to play hangman. But you need to have worked through all the exercises. It was very task-based. There wasn't anything about how this might extend your learning. It's just you're going to do this, you're going to do that. It's all too easy. I used to be one of the best um, in my class. It's really important that, you know, the teacher knows their student well in terms of, you know, where they're at, in terms of deciding where they need to get to. In geography, Louise completed the task, but was reluctant to ask for more work. There have been a couple of incidences where Louise has done work and finished it quite early on in the session and then actually not been given anything. Okay. You know, I mean, Louise doesn't want me to sit here and say anything negative because generally she does not feel negative about your class. I'm just saying that actually it's it's yes. not a well, good if thing. she's aiming for a level seven, I totally agree. I must have missed that. I didn't realise you had yeah. finished. Next time, put your hand up and you can use okay. an extension. Okay, fair enough. Differentiation should be built into any piece of work that there's extension work 
naturally there, that you can go as far with it as you wish. Well done. The idea of asking for extension work is ridiculous. No child's ever going to do that. You might as well just ask the teacher to beat you up there and then to save it happening on the bus on the way home later. There is the, an issue of when a, when a pupil says they've finished and they haven't always finished. Sometimes they've done it too quickly, too sloppily. They just want to get through it. So do you, you know, then just give them some extra bit of work that may or may not be appropriate? One minute. One minute, guys. You can have a very quick look and say, well, have you really thought this through? Do you really think that's adequate? Is this absolutely your best work? And maybe it is, in which case then there is a need for a planned piece of work. When you finish that, can you let me know, please? It might be something that's reinforcing what they've already done, or it could be something that's leading them into the next stage. But it shouldn't just be, oh, well, do the next chapter or answer the next question or just wait. We got chased by all the girls because they wanted our autograph. I was like, oh, my God, leave me alone. And then we just hid for the... In maths, Bradley was trying to avoid doing any work. They were in year as well. How are you doing? You've done well, then. Blimey. Chloe helped me. Blimey, you cause me so much trouble sometimes and then you come out with work like that. I love it. Thank you. I did that. Yeah, I said Chloe helped me. Oh, yeah, helped. Chloe helped. Yeah, well, cool. that's all right. I'm still very pleased that you brought that to me. I think where you come across teaching to the middle, generally speaking, you will find that it's all kind of quite... It's comfy. Nobody's out of their comfort zone. And if you look at, you know, just look at yourself, just look at yourself as a learner. Situations when you learn best. You learn at the edge of your comfort zone. Thank you. In some of the lessons, a lot of kids are like chatting around me and stuff and you try and concentrate but it's really really hard to stay healthy you need to cut down on all that fattening food and eat much more fresh fruit and vegetables i suggest when i'm talking you are silent jack that same meat applies to you well teaching to the middle is wrong you teach to the top and you give differentiated work down at the bottom yeah, you teach at the upper limit of their expectations to stretch them. If you teach in the middle, the ones at the top are just going to completely turn off education. You're like a whole bag filled with food or something. Children are just getting bored and start talking and then you start talking to them and you end up getting dragged into the conversation and stuff and it's really, really annoying. I totally accept teachers' points and I'm, I'm a fierce advocate of this that differentiating in a less than 30 ways is absolutely impossible. And that the expectation that we should perf perform you know, four different lessons at the same time is an absurdity. However, it costs you nothing to just fill in a box going, what I'm going to do for Louise when she's finished the work. I think you should have lunatic expectations of your children. And if they think you're mad, and they think you're crazy in what you expect of them, and you're using language they've never come across before, that is fantastic. So, now the aim for this lesson was to know Wow. The seven nutrients that you need to stay healthy. What you actually have to realise with bright children is when they've dealt with the basics and they've understood that, like any, they've, they've done the, the detailed, specific questions related to the subject, what they then want to contemplate is the philosophical. What so it's looking at the much bigger picture and asking a question within that and how far can you take that question. And that's why um, computer games are popular, because there are different levels you can progress to and you get the sense of excitement about progressing to another level. Um, they don't sell you kind of a, a, a PlayStation game that's only suitable for people with a certain IQ and the higher level one that's available for people with a higher IQ. Oh, yeah, take please. please get on the seat. Please, can you move out? Can you move out? Yes. Students can become skilled at self-designing, actually, of learning oh, yeah. so that they start to select um, depth, breadth that meets their particular needs. And it's a way of personalising, is to put the emphasis on them making the choice. If it comes to like really long words, like confused or over exaggerated, I can't do. I have to have some help with it. And they write them either on the board or they spell it too quickly. 
And I'd just get annoyed, so I just would, like, five minutes alone with the teacher to teach me how to spell properly. He's, he's very clear he wanted help with his spelling. You know, it came down to something that might, you know, sound quite basic. And I thought that was a really valuable point he made, that, you know, I want a bit of time. I just want a bit of time on my spelling. That things like that actually clearly did matter to him. In a way, if you treated Bradley like a boy with English as a second language, which he in some ways is, you would think, well, what's the problem? We'll, we'll put in the kinds of additional support that he needs to develop those skills. We'll make sure that all his teachers know that he has uh, difficulty with spelling and he needs some basic word vocabularies. He needs to be tested on it. You know, you've got to start where Bradley is, not where you wish he was. About Holland. I don't like writing. I found it hard, but I know it up here in my head, but when it comes to writing it down on paper, I find it hard. Boys don't like writing because it hurts their hands. They're not built for those fine motor skills. Um, it's also kind of a su suppression of the bodily movement that all boys want to get involved in. But, it, but there's another element to it, and uh, you know, boys have got to be taught that writing is fantastic. Sometimes students appear to be able to do a task at a certain level, but if they're motivated, they actually can perform at a higher level. And I noticed that Robert described himself as finding it difficult to write ideas down. But when he was challenged in the uh, drama lesson to write a new script, instantly started to write quite fluently, and we noticed him changing and altering his text in order to add in further ideas. And he didn't seem to find that that difficult. And he was able to exhibit a higher level response, written response, than he may have done in an exercise that he didn't find very engaging. Um, and I, I think that suggests that sometimes through uh, changing the nature of the task, we can actually elicit a higher level response. beaten outside a shop in North Yorkshire and has now gone missing. He was last seen outside London University around 3pm. That was fascinating and it may be that for Robert the fact that he was writing was, was with engagement and with editing was simply because he was standing up. And that, yeah, boys don't like sitting down very much and I, I found I learned quite a lot out of that actually that perhaps with boys, if you want them to get engaged in writing, get them standing up and writing. Clearly, it isn't that Robert doesn't like writing, it's that Robert actually likes writing for a purpose. Once you've captured Robert's imagination through, whether it was role play or the drama, you can then draw him into areas that he finds much more difficult and challenging, writing it down, expressing himself on paper. But he's, he's already been fired up and he will want to take it further. <laughs>